energy transition and solar panel should be good for silver, but is there enough supply? Mid-tier miner Endeavor Silver has a pipeline of advanced projects and the CEO is Dan Dixon. How you doing, Dan? I'm doing well. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me. Let's thumbnail Endeavor Silver. Tell us about it. Well, we're a silver producer. 60% of our revenue comes from silver. 40% comes from gold. We have two operating assets in Mexico. We've been in Mexico now 17 years. Those assets have been in operations for 16 and 15 years, respectively, the Guanas V mine and Bolinitos. Uh, but ultimately, we're kind of at an inflection point here. We've got our Terranera assets. It's also in Mexico, in the state of Jalisco. What we do, underground vein mining, uh, it's going to double our production and cut our cost profile in half. So. Here we are, we're looking for a construction decision by the end of this year, uh, and then it really reshapes the company. Let's expand on that. Uh, so you have a number of projects uh, at the top you mentioned before is Terranera. Yes, mm -hmm. Terranera is an epithermal system. Silver, gold, 60% of the revenue will come from silver, 40% will come from gold. We put a feasibility study out in 2021. We've been mm -hmm. working on project loan financing. Our balance sheet's in great shape. We kind of have the equity portion of Terranera already on our balance sheet. We sat on $115 million of cash. We're looking for about $80 million of debt. The build cost for Terranera is $175 million over two years. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to push on that uh, and ultimately takes our production profile from 8 million silver equivalent ounces this year to about 15 million silver equivalent ounces when Terranera comes online, hopefully by the end of 2024. What's uh, the um, steps uh, to getting to 2024 with that? Well, mainly we're fully permanent. Yeah. Um, there's some modifications to permits that are kind of normal course, we'd say. Our mobile fleet's actually already on site. We've already committed over $69 million. We've advanced uh, our budget to $41 million through October of this year. So we're moving actually quite quickly. So it's really the construction phase, which is like mm -hmm. I say, is a two year program. Uh, if we can execute that, we should be in a commercial production by the end of 2024. Let's go through the other pipeline projects and take us to uh, Pitaria. Yeah, this year we picked up a project, Pitaria. It's also in Mexico. It's in the state of Durango, near our exploration office, near our mm -hmm. Guanas Civi operating asset. Uh, it's actually one of the largest, largest undeveloped silver deposits in the world. We picked it up from SSR Mining, who made a discovery back in 2002. They re rationalized our portfolio this year. They're really a gold producer. They produce about 700,000 ounces of gold. For them, Pitaria just didn't meet their mandate in long-term view. For us, it meets it perfectly. 60% silver, the rest is actually uh, lead and zinc. Uh, there's ways to go. They defined 525 million ounces of silver at that mm -hmm. deposit. For us, we're probably gonna look at it from an underground standpoint, because that's what we know, that's what we do. It fits in very nice behind Terranera. And our goal as a company is to try to get to about 20, 25 million ounces. That puts us as a, a senior silver producer, and mm -hmm. Pitaria for us can help us get there. Any other projects you wanna highlight? Yeah, we actually actually have a project in Mexico called Peral. Uh, mm -hmm. We grew that to 40 million ounces uh, through the Jobrit to 2019. 2020, 2021, we had shut down with COVID. Mm -hmm. We had the drill rigs going again. Uh, this year we've released new results, uh, thicker results, higher grade results. We're trying to get to about 65 million ounces of silver. Mm -hmm. If we can get there, we're gonna put an economic study on it. That would be planned for next year. And it gives us really nice optionality after Terranera. The markets are good and Pitaria is working well. We can go that one path, or if not, something smaller scale would be something like Perel, which is 90% silver. Uh, so we have a great pipeline. There's probably not a pipeline better than ours in the, in the space right now. A lot of work to do over the next five to 10 years, but that's how we want it. Uh, talk about uh, the funding right now. So I think you said that, that there was a debt portion uh, that was coming with the Terranera. Yeah, what we're, like I say, our balance sheet's in great shape. Uh, we have over $155 million of working capital. We have no long-term debt, but we're looking for project loan financing. And I think it's prudent for our shareholders that we put debt on the books. We're looking for about 80 to 100, so Terranera is fully funded. Yeah. Like I say, we're working with some commercial banks and want that executed by the end of this year. Talk about uh, the community relationship around those operations. Yeah, Guanas V and Bolanitos, we've been there a long time. We've got great relationships with the small towns that are right beside it, and it's actually a fabric of what we do. ESG is important for us, and mm -hmm. ultimately you want to be a neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. You want to intertwine those communities with the mine. A lot of our employees come from those communities. At In Jalisco, Terranera, where it's going to be a new operation, there's not a history of mining there. 
We've been engaging that community since 2010. Uh, a lot of support from the community. A lot of our workers are going to come from there. So it's been very good. Continue to have that dialogue and it's going to change. As we've gone from exploration into development, those, that dialogue is going to change. When we go from development into operations, that dialogue is going to change. Those, the meeting demands of those communities will, will change with as we progress through, and then we have a team that handles that. I think it's going to it's been going very well. And I expect it to continue to go well. Talk about the country, Dan. Uh, is Mexico a good place to work? Yeah, Mexico for us has been phenomenal. I mean, first of all, it's got phenomenal geology, which is most important when it comes to mining. And as a jurisdiction in 2013, they changed their mining laws with regards to taxes. So we pay a special mining duty. We pay an environmental tax. Since the new government came in about three, four years ago, is under AMLO's uh, leadership. It's moved a little bit more left, but taxes haven't changed. There's been rhetoric uh, around the mining industry, but ultimately nothing's changed from a permitting standpoint. Things have slowed down a little bit, but it's still one of the best jurisdictions in the world to be at. Um, the geology is still phenomenal in Mexico. Labor supply is good. Long history of mining. It, we love where we're at. We think we have an advantage being there, and ultimately we'll be in, in Mexico for a long time. Uh, your mine operators, uh, who's on the team? Yeah, again, we've been the similar team for a long time. I've been with Endeavor for 15 years. I've been in this seat now for a year and a half. I think the most important aspect to our company is our new COO. He came from us from Continental Gold that built the Barraquita mine in Colombia that was ultimately sold. Prior to that, he was in Guatemala building the Escobar mine. And for us going into building Terranera, Don Gray, who's the COO, is very important. He's brought in guys to help build out that team. We have about 60 people in our development team getting ready here for Terranera. How about uh, on the exploration side, something that's uh, further ahead? Yeah, I mean, touching on Perel and Pitria, those are two big things from an exploration standpoint. We do have a footprint in Chile. We have about five projects down there. Elephant hunting, silver, gold. Mm -hmm. Uh, ultimately, we also picked up an asset last year in Nevada, the Bruner Project, we call it. It was had 300,000 ounces of gold to find, 13 million ounces of silver. Again, we're advancing that. Um, it, it, there's a lot of work left to be done in those projects. Our main focus being Peral and Pitteria from an exploration standpoint, though, still. Uh, let's step back uh, macro right now, uh, the industry. Uh, what's the supply picture look like for silver? Yeah, I mean, last year I believe we produced almost 850 million ounces of silver from mines. Most mm -hmm. of that production actually comes as byproduct from copper mines or gold mines. Yeah. From primary silver mines, it's actually only a third of that. Mm -hmm. um, copper has obviously done very well over the last year and a half. It's come off now, but there is silver there. I expect that supply to be relatively flat. Mm -hmm. It's been flat at dips, but we're not seeing big um, discoveries that's going to bring a lot of silver on. So I see it being relatively flat. And then when, if you're going to talk about supply, you got to talk about demand. And from a demand standpoint, what's happening in EVs and, and solars and the electrification that we're going through, mm -hmm. there's going to be an explosion from a demand standpoint. I think we're coming into a pinch point. Ultimately, EVs, you're going to see triple the amount of silver being used in those cars compared to the combustible engine. Uh, solar panels making big progress, but more silver in those solar panels is even to be more efficient. Uh, so lots happening from an industrial standpoint to increase that demand, which will ultimately put pressure on supply and see higher prices. Lastly, uh, catalysts over the next 12 months that you want to emphasize at Endeavor. Yeah, the biggest catalyst for us is going to be Terranera and be able to execute on Terranera. I think the market knows that we're going to move just based on the economics that we've published through the feasibility study that it will get developed. It will be funded. It's like, can we execute that on time and on budget? Ultimately, when we get through that two-year period, we'll see a catalyst of a change into what our multiple is. But we benefited from revising guidance upwards over the last two years. So our, we're operating really well and we're getting credit for that in the marketplace. Now it's going to be a question, can we execute on the build of Terranera? And I think we can. I think we're going to deliver for our shareholders. We have a beautiful growth pipeline behind that. So there's lots to look at Endeavor and we're excited for the next kind of three to four years. Dan, thanks for speaking with Gitko. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My name is Michael McRae. You're watching Kitco Mining here at Gold Forum Americas in Colorado Springs.